One of the quintessential markers of super elite mobility is actually something really quite banal. Recontextualized from the domestic bedroom to the first class cabin at 30,000 feet, a pair of pajamas, like the ones here on the screen from British Airways, is fully re semioticized as the ultimate marker and the performance of luxury and distinction. In fact, it's all about the magical staging of glamour. Indeed, the first class pajamas is a very common tactic for performing first class. A perfect example of synthetic personalization, whereby mass consumers are seemingly treated personally as individuals worthy of attention and intimate care. And the web abounds with stories of people's encounters with these first class pajamas. There are websites and blogs offering reviews of the best pajamas in first class. And eBay runs a tidy trade in the selling of, hopefully unused, first class pajamas. But as I once discovered, and I hasten to add quite exceptionally, there's more to these pajamas when it comes to their embodied realization. Not alone with furnishing first class customers with pajamas, the now defunct all business class airline EOS had a similar pair tied together with a ribbon ready for each guest. Medium, large or extra large. With its slightly obscure classical illusion, the name EOS appeared as a machine stitched embroidered monogram, resonating with a similarly old fashioned regal status marker. Made in China, 35% polyester. There, there. Sleep, my precious bundle. Would you like someone to tuck you in? Well, needless to say, the decadent frisson and the intimate promise of these pajamas did not materialize in their embodied execution. Like everyone else, I assume, I contorted myself inelegantly and had the door flung open compromisingly in the body-hugging space of the onboard toilet. Such was my naive determination to fulfill the promise of being styled elite. I persevered. And then emerged into the softly lit cabin in my pajamas. Suddenly, the glamour and the euphoria of the pajamas dissolved around me. As T.S. Eliot aptly put it, betwixt the idea and the reality falls the shadow. I was left instead with a drab reality and a slightly melancholic anticlimax. Needless to say, I slept no better. The plane arrived no earlier. But I must confess, the rub of soft, semi-synthetic fabric against my skin reassured me still of my cosy, privileged passage. <laughs>